forecast for Sunday, September 24th. So today we will see the moon in Capricorn go void of course at 4.06 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and we will be shifting into Aquarius energy at 7.30 p.m. So we love the transition from Capricorn energy to Aquarius energy because in Capricorn energy we're very stuck in our physical bodies, very focused on our physical realms. And even more than that, it feels like when the moon is in Capricorn that we are more aware of our challenges, of our blockages, of our roles, of our responsibilities, of our to-do list, and it feels very restricting. The Aquarian energy offers us a time to break away from some of those constructs, free ourselves from that particular mindset, and really kind of make things a little bit airy, a little bit more positive, a little bit more in the mental plane than in the physical body. The Aquarian energy wants us to kind of be a little bit rebellious in order to fight for the independence and the freedom that we realize that we don't have when the moon was in Capricorn energy. So seeing as we are now in Libra season, in air sign, we're still in the equinox energy, changing timelines and soul contracts. The moon being in Aquarius energy, in air sign, is definitely going to bring a lot of mental stimulation and conversation into the realm of existence. So there are 11 different aspects here today, nine of them going to involve the moon. We're going to kick the day off with a tough aspect. The moon in Capricorn energy is going to get in the boxing ring, square off with Chiron, the wounded healer. So, of course, a square never feels good. It creates tension. It creates conflict in order for us to realize where it is that a major change is needed first and foremost. We have to start identifying what the problems are and we have to start addressing them right away in order to fix them. Now, this particular interaction is going to be a struggle within ourselves between the old self and the new self. As you know, we're in a very, very interesting adjustment period where the old self is dissolving, is falling away, and the elements in which the old self had created falling apart as well. But the new version of self hasn't been integrated or anchored in yet. We're just dipping our toe in the new waters, if you will. We're figuring out how to create a space, a situation, a circumstance, a scenario to actually reintroduce our new version of self to the world around us. We haven't even gotten to know our new version of self as of yet. That's what Libra season is all about, is really getting to know ourselves, building the relationship within ourselves. And of course, that overflows into the relationship dynamics that we have with other people. So this is kind of like, you know, the moon in Capricorn wants us to be grounded, wants us to be logical and practical, has all of this weight on our shoulders with the roles and responsibilities that the old self had created. Chiron, the wounded healer, showing us where it is that we have to break away from this particular construct in order to actually lighten the vibe, lessen the existential dread, and prepare us to move on to new timelines, to new soul contracts. The moon is then going to interact with Venus in not the nicest way. This is going to illuminate for us the dramatic gap, the distance, if you will, in between the two choices, the two decisions that we're trying to make and what it is that our heart is asking us to pursue. So the tough aspect that comes with this is the fact that our heart technically wants two different things, but they're very, very much opposing each other. And, you know, a part of our heart space wants to continue to do what it is that we've been doing because that's old, tried, tested, true, familiar. It's predictable. However, there is a lot of energy being activated, especially in our DNA with this karmic, I'm going to say, switch up with the Algonox and with Libra season to push us into initiating new. We've outgrown a lot of the versions of ourselves and the aspects in which the old version has created, but our heart is kind of stuck in a tug of war at the moment as the old self hasn't quite dissolved and the new self hasn't integrated in. We're going to get a little bit of a good energy for just a moment with the moon and Capricorn trining beautiful interaction with Uranus who is retrograde in Taurus energy and of course he's the great awakener. So this trine means that we are seeing where a change is needed in our physical realm because of course we're talking about earth energies that's the physical body the physical realm and everything that we've created in it. Uranus is here to bring us a jolt of lightning an aha moment an epiphany if you will shaking us up waking us up giving us a different perspective a different alternative 
in order for us to start piecing together what it is that we want to start building towards as far as new goals, new visions, new dreams go. It's not going to last super long though. And then the moon and Capricorn going to get in the boxing ring again and fight it out this time with the North node in Aries. And of course that's our soul path, our destiny point. And right now we're having a little bit of a problem because there is an energy where we want everything to happen like yesterday. But of course the moon and Capricorn knows that we got to go low and slow and steady in order to actually win the race. So this is actually going to put us in a situation where instead of seeing the growth, instead of seeing the improvement, instead of seeing the healing, instead of seeing the steps being pieced together on how it is that we're going to move forward again in Capricorn fashion, we like to concentrate on the blockages, on the challenges. And instead of being optimistic and confident that we can overcome anything that's thrown our way, we tend to lose ourselves in a little bit of a negative narrative. We are not going to sit in this energy for too long. Luckily for us, the moon in Capricorn is going to sextile beautiful interaction with Neptune, who is retrograde in Pisces energy. So you'll often hear me talk about how I love these two interacting because we get a vision, an intuitive insight, a dream, a goal, a renewal in our soul and our spirit. And then we're able to bring it in to the physical body, add logic and practicality to it, especially in our long-term vision, a long-term goal on how it is that we plan to bring some of these aspects to life. Mars, the god of war, ruling over our physical energy, our drive, our passion, our desire, who is stuck in the weakest place that he could possibly find himself in this Libra and energy, the intellectual battlefield of indecision. That's why we haven't taken any major action in our physical realm because we need to decide and not uh, no decisions are being made in Libra and energy but Mars is going to go ahead and sit across from directly oppose Chiron who is retrograde in Aries energy Mars rules over the Aries energy that Chiron is retrograde in so let me just say this isn't going to feel good this is going to bring a certain level of complication to our lives now granted it may not stay for long but in this particular window of time we're going to feel like everything is way harder than it actually is way more weighted than it actually is and what happens here is that we get a little bit defensive we're on edge a little bit frustrated because we're tired that we can't, you know, make moves and take action. We're building a little bit of resentment, either against the circumstances in our lives, not freeing us up to do what it is that we know that we have to do or towards a particular individual that we feel is blocking our path, blocking our progress, blocking our growth. We are definitely a little bit edgy. So just pay attention to how it is that you're projecting that energy onto people and also be a little bit more empathetic and understanding if that particular energy gets projected onto you. This is going to kind of trigger a rebellious attitude, if you will. And, you know, we, we really can't be as aggressive as Mars would prefer to be right now. The Libra energy is here to make Mars passive aggressive so that we can slow down, not rush, not kind of jump into a reactive type of pattern and behavior. So the moon in Capricorn energy going to come up to bump into sit next to team up with Pluto, the great transformer himself, who was retrograde in this Capricorn energy. So this kind of suggests that we're at the end of the Capricorn energy because we know that Pluto is around that 27th degree. We know that when we near the ending degrees of a zodiac sign, there's always a little bit of an intensity. And we also know that the moon and Capricorn tends to bring on a negative Nancy narrative, a little bit of a Betty the bully type of tough love life lesson. And because of this, and of course, Pluto's contribution to sit in the darkness in order to see the light, to remind ourselves of the pain and trauma in order to give ourselves an opportunity to use that narrative to empower us, to make something beautiful out of a crappy hand in which we were dealt. What this does is it puts us in a new attitude of gratitude where we sit in the darkness and we start really appreciating a lot of the light. What is light? Light is hope. Light is information. Light is knowledge. What we're doing here is we're trying to change the emotional narrative and dialogue that hasn't been so happy, hasn't been so light and fluffy. We're trying to break away from that and we do it just as the moon in Capricorn is ready to go void of course, transitioning into this Aquarian energy. 
While the moon is void though, we're going to have an interaction with Mercury. Mercury's ruler of the mental plane and he is in his place of power in Virgo energy and this is not the best interaction. So this does suggest, and of course with the moon void anyways, things are shaky, things are uncertain, things are unstable, we're all over the place, we're not, we're not sure what we're thinking, what we're feeling, we're all discombobulated. Well, the moon interacting with Mercury is definitely going to show us where it is that our heart is thinking and feeling one thing and our headspace is thinking and feeling another. The perspective that we are taking, again, with the Capricorn energy, we're trying to think long term. With the Virgo energy that Mercury's in, we're trying to think of the smaller details on how we're going to make or break that long term goal and vision. We do shift into the Aquarian energy at 7.30 p.m., again, Eastern Standard Time. We sit in that for about three hours before we have an interaction. And the first interaction that we have with the moon in Aquarius, which of course puts us in the mental plane, detaches us from our emotions, which is exactly what we need in order to act as the observer and see what is coming up for us when we're not so emotionally involved. The moon in Aquarius energy is going to try and beautiful interaction with the sun now in Libra energy. As I previously mentioned, this is air on air. This is a lot of thought. This is a lot of stimulation. This is a lot of processing. This is a lot of conversation. This is a lot of communication. This is a lot of asking the right questions in order to gain the kind of information and details that we feel like we're lacking right now in order to make an informed decision. So what we're kind of being, I'm going to say, uh, challenged to see here is where it is that we're not informed where it is that we don't have all the information and details to paint the greater, grander picture of what is possible for us. Now, this isn't supposed to be a Debbie Downer type of situation. This is actually uh, suggesting that we're making a little bit of progress, that we're actually seeing where it is that we have to give some more thought to some things, where we have to have some conversations, where we have to be asking the right questions, which, of course, provides us with a lot more clarity than what it is that we've been sitting in. The moon in Aquarius energy going to interact with Saturn. Saturn, of course, is the traditional ruler over Aquarian energy. Uranus being the modern day ruler. So there is a little bit of intensity here. Saturn is retrograde in Pisces energy, trying to kind of deconstruct our old belief system and help us to dissolve old self and the circumstances which old self had created, which the new self is no longer in alignment with. The moon in this way, because it's a positive interaction, is illuminating for us where there's new roles and responsibilities, where there is a new timeline, new soul contracts, where we're bossing up, where there's the potential to start something new. But of course, we have to clean up the residue of the old before we can start actively taking action, making moves to build ourselves up towards the future. This is going to be an interesting dynamic because shortly thereafter, we have the sun interacting with Saturn, but not in the nicest way. We would actually prefer it to be the kind of way that the moon interacts with Saturn in. However, this is going to illuminate for us the division, the gap, the clash. Why, you may ask? Well, because there is a certain part of us that just wants to relax a minute. We haven't felt this light, this airy, this fluffy in a very long time. A lot of that is due to the earth energy that Virgo season was all about. Very, very stuck in the physical body, in the physical realm. There is this want, need, and desire to just have a moment, to take a break, to just have fun, to just do what we can to enjoy ourselves for a split second before the next ball drops. But yet there is this undertone coming from Saturn that we have to rise above it. We have to kind of tend to our responsibilities. We don't have time to have fun right now. We have to kind of get to work. And there is a lot of doubt, a lot of insecurity, a lack of faith that can come when Saturn is aspected and not the nicest way. And because he's aspecting the sun in Libra, that has a lot to do with our mental plane. We can go from happy to sad in 2.2 seconds or less. And this kind of puts us in a seesaw effect, which Libra season is all about. We want to find balance. We want to find peace. We want to find harmony, but we're going to spend the entirety of Libra season living in extremes in order to find that middle ground. So there is this want, need, and desire to kind of take a break, 
to step back, if you will. But then that other part of us is like, you don't have time to sit around and do nothing and to enjoy yourself. We have work to do. We have decisions to make. We have, you know, futuristic bridges to build in order to get us away from where it is that we're at and closer to where it is that we desire to be. So this may be a back and forth push and pull in order for you to find a happy medium, a happy compromise. Maybe you do two things on your very long to-do list and then you give yourself a little bit of a mini break. This is all about trying to really achieve that balance in between the highs, the lows, the everything in between in order for us to see where it is that we do deserve a break from constantly banging our head against a wall and where equally we still have things, commitments, obligations that we have to rise and actually fulfill.